The issue of the quality of entrepreneurs is always important, but is especially relevant in high-tech and knowledge-intensive entrepreneurship. Startups in this context are reputed to be more subject to market failures. For this reason, it is also well accepted that they are heavily reliant on the human capital of their founders. What a startup can do is what its founders are capable to do, is a common refrain among practitioners. And scientific literature is almost unanimous in emphasizing that, especially at the early stage, founders' human capital, in terms of educational attainment, work experience, especially when it is gained in the same sector of operation of the startup, and also managerial know-how, are all key ingredients for the success of a high-tech entrepreneurial venture, whether this success is measured in terms of growth, innovation, or other relevant key performance indicators. But by definition, employing high human capital in entrepreneurship has a high opportunity cost. In other words, if one individual is highly educated and decides to found a firm and become an entrepreneur, most of the time she gives up the opportunity to pursue other career options, like for example being a well-paid executive or manager in an established company. This opportunity cost can be made large by the circumstance that failure rates in knowledge-intensive sectors are intrinsically high. For example, failure in high-tech entrepreneurship is a very common outcome, sometimes even despite the value of the innovative idea and the effort exerted and competence shown by the entrepreneurial team. Therefore, from a policy perspective, it is always important to remind that failure is not a death sentence. It can actually be quite instructive and be functional to the success of a second startup. The experience of the European company Skype is very instructive in this respect. Skype is the well-known application software that is specialized in providing video chat and voice calls between computers, tablets and mobile devices via Internet. It was released in 2003 and experienced a rapid and dramatic success. The company was sold to eBay in 2005 for 2.1 billion euros, later bought back and then resold to Microsoft for 6 billion euros. But few probably know that Skype was created by Niklas Zenstrom and other co-founders after the failure of a former company they created, that used a technology named Kaza that was rather similar and proved to be crucial in the further development of Skype software. Quoting the home words of Zenstrom, Kaza was a financial failure, but at the same time, probably the best experience in terms of learning. So one important policy lesson in the domain of high-tech and knowledge-intensive entrepreneurship is not to punish too much honest failure, since a light burden lowers the opportunity cost of being an entrepreneur and can trigger a quick and profitable also from a social welfare perspective, second start by talented entrepreneurs. On a general ground, this requires intervention on bankruptcy law, but also specific attention to the cultural sphere in order to reduce the social stigma which may arise from failure. The award for the best failed business established in Singapore a few years ago may represent an example of such a policy intervention aimed at changing people's attitude towards business failure. Skype was also created thanks to venture capital investment in the early stage of development. Actually, the most important companies one may ever mention in high-tech and knowledge-intensive sectors, from Microsoft to Google, did receive this typology of investment when they were young, sometimes very young. Venture capital is the professional asset management activity that invests funds raised mostly from institutional investors into promising new ventures. While the term business angel usually refers to individuals, often former successful entrepreneurs, who invest their own money into entrepreneurial ventures in return for an equity stake or convertible debt of the new company. Venture capital, and to some extent also business angels, are reputed to be important actors in the entrepreneurial finance ecosystem, not only for the financing resources they provide to selected firms, but also for the coaching and mentoring functions they are able to offer to investees. But venture capital was born and has flourished in the United States, yet it has only moderately developed in other geographical areas. 
which policy measures are more suited to stimulate venture capital in this different institutional context is still an open question. While one domain in which, in principle, benefits of a policy intervention are less debatable is the establishment of public startup contests and competitions to award the most promising innovative business ideas. Winners, in this case, may get a stamp of approval that can ease their relationship with the relevant stakeholders in the development of their technology. In fact, one other important stylistic fact about high-tech and knowledge-intensive startups is that their intrinsic lack of a track record may translate into a deficit in credibility and reputation in the market, which in turn may hamper their actual possibilities to access key complementary assets. The more these competitions keep low participation costs, are run by competent committees, and they are really selective in the sense that there is strong competition among applicants, the more powerful will be the associated stamp of approval for winners. Thank <music> you.